Now you've written several nonfiction books. Is yes. this your first novel? It's absolutely my first novel. Um, I never thought I'd write a novel, and I ne certainly never thought I would take six years researching a novel, but it, it is my first novel and I'm very excited. What made you decide to write a novel? Well, it all began, my husband and I decided we'd take a road trip. But unlike normal people that go to Orlando or go to the Grand Canyon, our road trip was in Turkey. So um, we were lucky enough or unlucky enough in Ephesus, our guide was a college professor who wanted to take us to all the historic sites. I wanted to know where she got the knockoff Chanel purse, but <laughs> we ended up with going to the house of the Virgin Mary. Well, I had no idea that the Virgin Mary ever lived in Turkey. So it became a quest and then I I wanted to know how much more that I, who grew up as a Christian, didn't know about and what other relics were there. And that led me on this six-year hunt through five countries, three continents, I climbed mountains, I stayed with monks, I stayed with a hermetic nun, and I traveled um, through Italy with an exorcist from the Vatican. Oh, wow. What, what was that like? Did you see them perform any exorcisms? No, no. He just, he, he became my guide to finding this relic that I was looking for, which is the Veil of Veronica, which actually does exist. And when I showed him the images that we took of the veil, because the monks brought it right out for us with no problem. When I showed him the images of the veil, he flat away fainted on the altar. And all I'm thinking to myself is, okay, this is going to turn into Weekend at Bernie's. I've got an 80-year-old dead guy that I've got to drive back to Rome. So what's a person like me doing in a place like this? I don't know. Now, the main character in your book is a journalist. Yes. How, what other similarities do you have with her? Um, she has my voice. Um, she has better legs than me. Um, she is always in trouble. I've always been in trouble my whole life. Um, <laughs> Um, and she, as we say, don't take no crap from nobody, you know, and uh, I guess I don't either. Um, she is like a dog on a bone, and once she gets there, she won't let go, and that's what this woman is like. I don't, I don't, it's, a, a lot of people have said to me, well, we've never seen a female protagonist like this. Well, it's only men, a male protagonist. So I said, yeah. why? <laughs> Why? Why does a woman have to be, oh, I, I'm afraid to go there? And somebody else said to me, well, you know, she's 42 years old. She's too old to have adventures. What? <laughs> this is what I came up against. That's really great, though, that you wrote it. And when I read it, I mean, it reminded me a little bit of the Da Vinci Code. And um, But it's great because it's a female protagonist. And I like that, how it's not just the typical, like, 20-year-old or college student. She's kind of banged up. She's kind of been through it all. She, and the last thing in the world she expected was that this would happen to her. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I expected when I walked into the house of the Virgin Mary in Turkey was that this would happen to me. I thought I was going to get a knockoff Chanel purse in our next stop. That's all I thought. And was the process of writing this different than writing the nonfiction books you've written? Yes, the nonfiction books, you just do a little research, you have an expertise, and you bang it out. This was a labor of love, sometimes a labor of hardship, sometimes I wanted to pull my hair out, sometimes I'd get to a point and then I'd realize this is not working and I'd have to start all over again because I'd find another clue that would lead me to yet another place. So it was a very, very strenuous, but incredibly exhilarating experience for a journalist. I mean, yeah. it was the ultimate, unless I was going to a war zone, I can't imagine anything more exciting than doing this. Yeah, because you, from all your research, you, you lived the book in a, lived the book a bit everywhere. as well. Every single place mentioned in that book, whether it's the Amazon, whether it's the top of a mountain, whether it's a monastery, whether it's a cave, whatever it is, I did it. I did it.
Can I have your life? That sounds like so much. <laughs> now, what, what's next for you? Do you plan to write a sequel? Do you want to write some more novels? I would love to write another one. I'm waiting for another bolt of lightning. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's going to happen to me. I hope it's going to happen to me because from what I'm hearing, people like the character and they yeah. want to see her to have more adventures. So I'm waiting for the next mystery to hit me. And I think I think I would like to stick to this genre of, of hidden religious mysteries that we don't know about because I think it's incredibly interesting. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, I know um, for some people that's a bit of a controversial topic. Have you received any back? Backlash because of that, or not yet? But it's all, today's only the first day out, and I want you to know that the monks who gave me the most controversial subject in the book, which was that the that Saint Veronica never existed. Yeah. Uh, I got f friended on Facebook by one of them yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda Stacy. This is my book, my first novel, The Sixth Station. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, and I hope it doesn't take you six years to read it. It took me six years to make it. Thank you.